Hey, this is Mark Henry, author of Dancing with Energy, Healing Magic, and Mysticism, here to talk to you more about the occult and the paranormal. Well, today I'm going to be talking about a different subject, and that is going to be Aphrodite and Eros, Passion Unchained. Before I begin, I just kind of want to uh, remind you all that uh, I uh, have been delaying just through my own lack of time. I've been delaying um, moving the prices back in my attunement store, so it is still kind of the holiday um, discount. So uh, it will be gone in 24 hours. It's just I just don't feel like doing it today. So I'll give you an extra 24 hours if you're interested in um, taking part and exploring uh, attunements and the spiritual connections to, to spirits, gods, goddesses, angels, demons, all that sort of thing. Now, I've been getting a lot of good reviews, and people have been making a lot of really cool changes in their life. So check it out. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, so let's get started. All right. So I have always loved uh, world mythology. And if you ever look at Judeo-Christian mythology, uh, you'll find things like sex, violence, betrayal, uh, natural disasters, the supernatural, you know, what else can you ask for in uh, fan fiction? Of course, I've been also interested in Greek mythology for a long time. I took a class in high school, and then I took a formal class uh, in college with a really good professor, and we explored, we kind of went more in depth than just the kind of the traditional stories. Maybe you took one in high school or college. But, um, they too, you know, what do you have in these stories? You still have revenge, seduction, love, um, people acting up. It's just, um, and this is not just, what's different about the Greek mythology is that the gods are ask, and goddesses are, are acting like this, not just the mortals, you know, as in the, you know, the Holy Bible. So it's really kind of an interesting uh, contrast, but you still see the same sort of uh, stories. And I don't necessarily um, think that with the Greek mythology that the gods and goddesses, this is kind of like a disparagement of them. I think that the writers of these tales were trying to make, um, I guess, spiritual lessons out of them. Okay, so what is the dark side of love? What is the shadow side of sex? You know, what is the bad part of an innocent lie? So, you know, you know how can tragedy, tragedy can befall um, when you engage in certain things? So, that's kind of my take on it. Um, but I don't want to get too far into that, kind of an interpretation of world mythology. So, uh, what I had kind of on my mind today is two specific uh, deities uh, in the Greek pantheon, and that would be Aphrodite and Eros. Now, you probably are familiar with Aphrodite. She is the Greek goddess of love. Um, she's been the subject of many myths, many stories. She's had uh, many lovers, uh, had a husband, had lovers on top of having a husband, and uh, she is associated with things like beauty, connection, love, uh, physical pleasure. So when you are engaging with her, you know, you of course, when we're looking at gods, goddesses, and spirits, is, you, know, you know, what are their powers, what are their abilities, what are their offices, and those are hers. So if you uh, were trying to connect better with people, if you were trying to maybe change your energy and maybe bring out the better loving parts of yourself, and Aphrodite would be, she would be your gal. So, consider that. Uh, she also um, not only had lovers that were of the gods, she had mortal men, and I mentioned Hephaestus, which were, um, which was her husband. And of course, when we're talking about, I mentioned ago about the dark parts of this. So what do you have with, you know, the one aspect 
of love, you can have the shadow side, which is jealousy, which is what you would see in some of her myths. Um, you would see kind of the that part of it. Um, I remember two myths. One was that, okay, so the, the worst thing you could ever do to a Greek goddess, for the worst thing that a mortal can do, is to say that you're better than them, or even appear better than them. You know, there was a uh, one myth uh, about Aphrodite and a mortal named Psyche. Now, Psyche had the reputation of being actually more beautiful than Aphrodite. So, as a punishment, you know, Aphrodite, <laughs> um, you know, she she sent Eros off to punish her for that. Um, I've remember I've read myths about Athena, where someone would say that they are better than her in certain abilities, and of course you do not you do not say that to a Greek goddess. So, in any case, light and dark parts of these stories. It's actually it makes for really good stories because people they also make them very relatable, right? When you're trying to uh, write write fiction when you're trying to write short stories there always has to be certain elements or has to be tension you can't have um, you can't have just you know bunnies and rainbows and it doesn't make for a very interesting story so um, these myths I think have endured because of the lessons and of the way that it kind of catches the reader and describes um, human nature you know to some degree so, uh, next, Eros. Now, Eros is the son of Aphrodite. And depending on the myth that you read, um, he is the son of Aphrodite and Ares. So what is Ares? Ares is the god of war. So you have a god of war, you know, having uh, sex with the goddess of love, and then the offspring would be, what would you expect? You expect that Eros, uh, mixed with all of that, that he would be somebody who is responsible for passion, intensity, seduction, infatuation, and even if you were to talk about friendships, the more intense type of friendships. So, in fact, um, Aphrodite would send... Eros along for certain missions, the things that she just was kind of, you were thinking of her, she, she's like the general, and he'd be like the lieutenant, okay, here's your mission, go and do this. Um, if I remember correctly with that story about Psyche, he actually sent Eros to go and, I think I even said it, um, to punish her in some way, and I think that he fell in love with Psyche, and then, you know, that angered Aphrodite, and um, anyway, it's a good story, you can look it up if you like. But um, just know that because he is a god, that his aspects, his qualities of all of those things I mentioned are going to be a little bit more um, maybe masculine and forceful. So if you were to work with him, kind of expect that. Now I myself, when I've worked with Aphrodite, because I, of course I do a lot of energy work, um, Aphrodite, I find, is very good for people who are rather introverted. Introverted in the sense that there may be in certain situations where they have to mix, they have to connect, maybe going to a party or whatever, or maybe they need a certain energy or ability when for their career, but maybe that doesn't naturally come to them. So Aphrodite is about connecting. So I find that when I've actually elicited the energy of Aphrodite, like for an attun from an attunement, for example, that I am more social, that I feel it's very easy, much easier to talk as I myself in it, is an, or an introvert. Um, I find that I connect with people easier, like 10 times better than usual, and people are re respond to her energy. You know, these are, you think of it as she represents very archetypal energy of a specific kind. People respond to it. They'll start talking to you more. They'll start 
um, being more interested in you, making more eye contact, all that, all those sorts of things. Um, I've done it before uh, in a powerful way where I would be in a restaurant, I started just talking to somebody, and then other people would come over and try to participate in the conversation, people I don't know. So that's the type of real world effects that Aphrodite's energy can have. Now Eros, on the other hand, <clears throat> again, is a little bit more intense th than that. Uh, Eros is, the Roman equivalent is Cupid. So he is responsible uh, in some of the stories of shooting an arrow into somebody's two lovers' heart and making them fall in love. In fact, if I remember correctly, part of this, the story about the psyche was that Aphrodite wanted him to shoot an arrow to make Psyche fall in love with the most unattractive man on earth. <laughs> So, pettiness, that's the right, being petty. Okay, so don't be surprised that if you work with Eros that um, you would have a little bit more of an intensity. Now, that is kind of good and not so good because depending on the person, if you were using it to, in the same way as Aphrodite, if you were interested in attracting someone or... Um, to making, if you wanted to play matchmaker between two people, you know, you could be um, arrows too and shoot your little arrow, your energetic arrow. Um, if you wanted to do that, just understand that the, in the, the more of it, the intensity of the energy could be off-putting and it can, while it can feel good and can be intense, there's always that added thing that um, it could go um, in another direction. So, there's nothing wrong with intensity, there's nothing wrong with passion, um, there's nothing wrong with all of these different types of things. In fact, if we didn't have any of those things, it's uh, quite likely that none of us would um, be here, because our parents have had to have it um, uh, for each other to some degree. Okay, so I just want to kind of give you a brief snapshot of these two, these two deities, God and Goddess, Greeks stories it's all good stuff so um, again um, I'll put a link in the description to my Etsy store if you still want to check out the attunements I do have one for Eros and I do have one for Aphrodite any case please subscribe and like hit the notification bell to know when these videos are um, being posted and check out my patreon I have other videos that add to the ones that we do here. All right. Well, I will talk to you later and you have a good weekend.